Good morning, Sergeant. Morning, Superintendent. Morning. Inspector Lee right here. Thank you. Who is she, Phil? Hello, Bob. No idea. Bloodstained handkerchief in her pocket, letter S in the corner. You won't like this hazard. She's very young. Half a dozen knife wounds around the heart. She died instantly. What sort of knife? Any sort, as long as it was sharp, pointed. No sign. Who found out? A couple of kids. No blood on the ground or any signs of a struggle. Must have been killed somewhere else and dumped here. How long has she been dead? Between five and eight yesterday evening is the nearest I can put it. Missing persons have nothing to report, sir. Oh, thank you. Ground's pretty hard. We've searched the area, sir, but found nothing. Nothing but the handkerchief, huh? No, nothing. Well, send that clothes along to the station, will you? Yes, sir. Come on, Phil. Nice, simple things. Are they? They don't quite go together, do they? These do. It'll be some hysterical, frightened boy. I don't think so. In my experience, an aesthetical frightened boy stabs once, well, twice maybe, and then runs. But this monkey went on and on till he was exhausted. Now, this girl was killed in hate, not fear. I should say she was a student. Now, if she's in the habit of going away for the weekend, she may not be missed until tomorrow. Get a list of every college and academy in London. See if a girl doesn't turn up in the morning. Particularly any girl whose name begins with S. Hi, Tate. Davy. Where's Sapphire? Isn't she in Birmingham with her brother? I don't know. She was going and then she changed her mind. I don't know what she did. Well, if you're worried, why don't you phone him? No, I don't want to speak to her brother. She caught the morning train, I expect. Don't worry, Saf, I'll be in for Scarlet's coffee. See you then. Hi, David. Hi. Congratulations on your scholarship. When are you off to Rome? Next month. Lucky devil. David! David! Mr. Harris.
Chris. We won't keep you very long. I, I'm sorry, but we think you may be able to help us. Thank you, miss. What else did they ask you? All about David, the scholarship and everything. If she'd had any boyfriends before him. I couldn't tell them. I've only known her since I took her to stay with me at my digs. Where was she living before that? Her dump in Earl's Court. The landlady turned her out. But why? Sapphire was such a sweetie. Who would do such a thing to Sapphire? Who would do it? You say her name was Sapphire Robbins. I'd like you to come down to my office, ask a few questions. Do you think you feel up to it? We'll send you home in a police car afterwards. We were going to get married. I'm sorry. Say the last time you saw her was on Friday night. Yes. Do you know what she did on Saturday? She came to my house, apparently. Just after lunch. You went in? No, I went to Cambridge to sketch. I, I, I'm a student architect at the Polytechnic. What train did you catch? I hitchhiked both ways. What time did you get home? About 11. Oh, who gave you a lift from Cambridge? A chap in a black consul dropped me at the post office. What time was that? About quarter to eleven. You wouldn't remember the number of the car, I suppose? No. Somebody ought to tell Sapphire's brother. We contacted Dr. Robbins in Birmingham. He's on his way to London now. Oh. Did you and Sapphire have a quarrel on Friday night? No. Thank you. Sergeant. Drive Mr. Harris home, will you? Very good, sir. You'll let me know if you find out anything, won't you? You've got to be informed, Mr. Harris. Oh, Mr. Harris. What time did you say you got back from Cambridge? About 11. Thank you. The truth, do you think? Well, not what I describe as the whole truth. I don't believe he came in when he said he did. But his grief seemed genuine enough. You never know with these monkeys. They can act their heads off when it suits them. Ring up the yard and get them to ask the BBC to broadcast with the driver of that black consul. All right. Meanwhile, we'll take a look at that girl's room before our brother gets here. Had she been with you long? About six months. Oh. Not pretty tidy. Sapphire so wasn't naturally an orderly child. She did her best. Did you like her? Indeed I did. I felt sorry for her. Her parents were dead, and she wanted so much to, to be counted in, to belong. Did you ever meet her brother? No, but I spoke to him on the telephone. He sounded very nice. This one's locked. I'm sorry, I haven't the key. Oh, I wish you wouldn't.
wonder who she was dancing with. Did she play the gramophone often? All the time, very softly. She was a student at the Royal Academy of Music. Well, thank you, Mr. Thompson. You'll be most helpful. Well, evidently, there was a side to Sapphire she didn't know about. Yeah. Maybe young Harris found the same thing and didn't like it. Could be. Unless the person she was dancing with found out about young Harris. Jealousy is very near to hate. Your brother's here. David? What's the matter? Really, I've got to speak to you. The girl's brother's here, sir. Dr. Robbins. Right, send him in. Sir. Dr. Robbins, sir. Very good of you to come so quickly, sir. How do you do? Please sit down. Thank you. I suppose there's no doubt. It is Sapphire. No doubt at all, I'm afraid. I know this must be painful for you. But there are some questions I have to ask you. Uh, of course. Uh, no, thank you. I understand you expected your sister for the weekend. Yes, I did. Weren't you worried when she didn't turn up on Saturday? No, no. She rang me and said something unexpected had stopped her. With Sapphire, something unexpected was always happening. How did you sound? Uh, excited, I thought. What sort of a girl was your sister? Happy, lively, exactly as she looked. No, no. That's not quite true, is it? Are you... Were you Sapphire's half-brother? No. Our father was a doctor, white. Our mother, a singer, black as I am. You never know which way it's going to go. Since Sapphire came to London, she learned to pass for white. Did David Harris know that your sister was colored? I don't know. I knew little of Sapphire's life up here. She seemed happy. I didn't pry further. My sister was 21, you know. Why did you let her come to London? Uh, she wanted to come. I didn't see why she shouldn't have the same chance as any other youngster. I'm a bachelor. I could afford to stake her. Did she ever talk about anyone else besides young Harris? I can't remember. I hardly listened, Sapphire. I chatted so much. It's unbelievable. I can see her now, sitting on the table in my consulting room, swinging her legs, laughing, twittering like a bird. Patience waiting, but on she went. I could have slept her sometimes. Who would do such a thing? Who would do it? I'd like to see my sister. I'll take you. No, I'd rather go alone. The New End Hospital, Hampstead. Thank you. Bob, that girl with... Oh, this is Dr. Robbins. Detective Inspector Leroy. How do you do? Hello. You can get me at the Dorset Hotel. They take us there. Thank you. So, that's the brother. Yes. I think I was right. Hate killed Sapphire. I think she died because she was colored. She was also pregnant. Three months. Your Topsy's just in. Young Harris, of course. Well, I don't know. We can't be sure now, can we? I mean, uh, might be anybody.
Dad, I've been trailing everywhere after you. What's the matter? Girl on Hampstead Heath. With Sapphire. Sapphire? Yes, David's had to go and identify her. David? I'm so frightened, Dad. Don't worry, girl. Where's David now? He's gone home. Tell us you were the father of Sapphire's child. You didn't ask me. Were you on the other side of that? No. They're in there with Davy now. Don't worry, dear. It's only routine. Where do you think you're going to? Up to my room, Dad. I told him he could, and I want him to. Show him, Millie. I'm Davy's father. Uh, Superintendent Hazard. What's been said? We know about the baby, Dad. Well, what of it? We knew. She came here to tell us on Saturday, just after lunch. My boy was going to marry her. I gave her my word he would. They want to know what time I got in on Saturday night, Dad. About 11. Did you talk to anyone in Cambridge? Anyone might remember you? Where did you eat? I took sandwiches. He always does. We can't afford meals in cafes, you know. Inspector? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mrs. Farr. He went through David's room with a magnifying glass. I don't care if they take the boards up. David's got nothing to hide. I think they'll be gone by the time the twins get back. They'll hear it at school, Millie. You can't keep it from them. You've got to make up your mind to that. Excuse me. Superintendent Hazard would like to see you for a moment, Mrs. Farr. Uh, Mrs. Farr, what time did you finish work at the dairy on Saturday? About half six. A little late, surely. And my assistant was away all last week. I had the tidying up to do. I see. Did you come straight home? This is your home? For the moment. My husband's away. Let's see. Who was in the house when you got here? Nobody. I was at the club. My wife was at her sister's with the twins. Twins? My children. Oh. Uh, the girl Sapphire had gone when you got in. Yes, she wasn't here. How did she seem when you saw her earlier in the day? Same as usual, full of life. Did you know that she was coloured? We knew. How long? We knew. That's enough, isn't it? I see. I understand you've just won a scholarship that takes you abroad. Of course, you won't leave till all this is settled, will you? Don't worry, he'll be staying here. All right, Dad, I can answer for myself. Is that all, Superintendent? There are the children. I must get their tea. Why, of course, Mrs. Farr. Superintendent? Hadn't you better advertise for the fellow that drove Davy back from Cambridge? I don't want any slime sticking to my son, you know. We have that in hand, Mr. Harris. You say this man dropped you at the post office. Did anyone see you at that time of night on Saturday? I don't know. Yes, yes, Jack Ferris. He saw me, Dad. Local constable. You wouldn't call him a liar, I suppose. If Johnny Turnbull trod on your feet, he didn't mean to. Little boys are clumsy dancers. What did your feet he trod on? Oh, Mummy, she's always grumbling. I hate dancing classes. Last week you loved them. Hello. Good day, Mrs. Farr. Good day. Thank you. There's angel cake for tea. Oh, they knew she was coloured then. Yes. But the point is when. And that's a very important point. Find anything upstairs? No, nothing. All his clothes were clean and put away. Hmm. Pretty rocky alibi of young Harris's. 
Familiar motive, too. That's all too pat for my liking. You know, if he'd married that girl, he probably couldn't have taken up that scholarship. He wouldn't carry a grant for a wife. Hmm. Well, are we going to have a word with this local constable, uh, what's his name, Ferris? Yes, right away. Yes, sir. I did see young Harris walking home on Saturday night. What time was that? Oh, it was near 11. This makes no difference. And he was coming from the post office? From that direction, sir. What sort of people are the Harrises? Oh, very respectable, sir. Cut above the average. Uh, Mrs. Harris was a school teacher. How long had they known the girl was coloured? What? Yes, she was, you know. Oh, I shouldn't have thought they knew that at all, sir. He's very bigoted, Ted Harris. And very ambitious for his son. Oh, very. Ted Harris has skipped himself to do for Davy. Mind you, the boy's repaid it all with that scholarship he's won. And the daughter? Oh, Millie's her father all over again. Dancing classes for the twins. Elocution. Must have that bit extra. Her husband's a sailor. Merchant Navy. Bit of a laddo, Sid Farr. Doesn't seem to get much leave. Or doesn't want it. Can you find out if Harris used his van on Saturday night? I'll do my best, sir. He only saw him coming from the direction of the post office. That's no alibi, you know. Well, the boy looks truthful to me. What's the track width of Harris's van, would you say? Oh, I don't know. Four foot... Four foot six? Hmm. I think I'll go back to the heath and take a look around. Four foot six inches, sir. Yes. yes, it's more than possible. Sir? You shouldn't have come. I uh, wanted to see where my sister died. Not here. No? No. She was brought here somehow and... Left. There is no roadway for a car. Oh, I don't know. A small one could have just made it. But the ground's too hard to show tracks. Did David Harris kill her? What makes you say that? She was pregnant. I've seen the autopsy. Yes, but there's no proof that he killed her. If he did, we'll get him, rest assured. There is no assurance for me or my kind, Superintendent. I've been black for 38 years. I know. She may have looked white, but Sapphire was colored. Your sister was murdered. We'll find out who killed her. I'm sure that is your intention. It is my intention. It's also my job. I'm sorry. Thank you. When I was a child, Another boy touched me. He then held out his hand. Look, he said. Nothing's come off on me. Trouble is, something came off on me. How do I get to Bloomsbury? I'll give you a lift. It's on my way. Oh. Sorry, sir. <laughs> I'm full. I don't want a room. I've come to thank you for looking after my sister. You've got the wrong address. I take only white students. My name is Robbins. How much did Sapphire owe you? Her rent was paid up. May I come tomorrow and pick up Sapphire's things? The police have sealed her room. You must ask them. Thompson? That girl you brought here, did you know she was colored? What girl? Sapphire. Yes. Yes, I did. When did she tell you? Well, she didn't. A friend told me. 
This house is my living. If it got round that I took coloured students, certain white people wouldn't allow their children to stay here. Well, I think it's a damn silly prejudice. I'm not saying it isn't, but I can't afford to have my rooms empty. To think that she could be so sly. It's people like you who made her sly. Will you jolly well got another room empty now? Patsy. Yes? You took Sapphire home to Guildford, didn't you? Yes. Did you tell your father and mother she was coloured? No. Well, then, don't be so quick to call me prejudiced. You sure? Right. Well, Addis's van could have made it. Not on Saturday night, it couldn't. What? Van was in the garage having a big end fixed. Harris didn't pick it up until Monday morning. Well, how the blazes did he get her there? Ask Sergeant Cook to come in, will you? Thank you. Red taffeta under a tweed skirt. Yes. That's the black under the white, all right. Oh, come off it, Phil. Yes? Oh, come in, Sergeant Cook. Tell me. What do you make of that? I wouldn't know what to make of it, sir. Oh, come, you're a woman. Now, where do you suppose a thing like that could be bought? I wouldn't know, sir. No. Try Babette's, Shaftesbury Avenue. And how would you know? You just take my word for it. Uh, they cater for girls who like flashy, pretty underwear. Certainly isn't built for durability. No. Well, check on it first thing in the morning, will you? Uh, Babette's, you say? Shaftesbury Avenue. Shaftesbury Avenue. There's a good girl. I bet you her boyfriend bought it for her. Going in today, Davy? Of course he is. I'm not going in. You've got to face it sometime, lad. Better now than later. It's in the paper this morning. The autopsy. They don't mention David. Won't stop them guessing. Oh, David. Whatever made you get mixed up with a coloured girl? I didn't know. When did you know? Last week. By then I didn't care. That's what she banked on. Never say you didn't know till last week. Never. What's it matter? It gives you a motive. That's what it matters. It gives us all a motive. We none of us knew till the weekend, did we? No. I'll never forget her standing here Saturday. And when Dad said he'd see her brother and tell him that Davy would stand by her, she laughed and said, he'll be a shock to you. He's as black as a pot. Shut up, Lily. And she laughed some more and said, don't look like that. David doesn't care. Have you done your teeth? Hands well scrubbed? No. Mm, lovely smell. Oh, Janice, I've got something for you. There you are. Now you've both got one. Oh, thank you, Granddad. Granddad, will you make me another one? I can't find mine. Well, you'd better look for it. Buck up with your breakfast, you two, and Grandpa will take you to school in the van. Don't bother, Dad. I'll take him to school. Yes, I remember the girl. She used to spend quite a bit of money here. She was a good customer for a little while. When? About six, seven months ago. Did she come alone? Usually. Mm. Except once. Well? But she had a young fellow with her then. Porcelain boy, fair. No, I remember being very surprised. She was such a dainty kid. And he was a great big coloured chap. Coloured. A great big coloured chap, she said. Hmm, the other side of the picture. Before she learned she could pass for white. Really? It's a doctor in Bloomsbury. It says Sapphire went to see him on Saturday morning. Tell him we'll be right over. Right. Sergeant, ring up the Royal College of Music and see if they have any record of Sapphire's previous addresses. Very good, sir. Oh, and then you can nip over to the Harris's place and see if any of the neighbours saw the girl leave on Saturday. Thank you. No, she wasn't a regular patient. I'd never seen her before. She rang for an immediate appointment. I saw her at 12.30 on Saturday. Did you tell her at once? Yes, she was bursting to know. Was she upset? No, on the contrary, excited. Delighted at having her own suspicions confirmed. What name did she use? The one on the card. Mrs. Harris. Did she tell you she was coloured? No, she didn't mention it. No, I bet she didn't. 
But uh, you can always tell, can't you? No, Inspector, as a matter of fact, you can't. What? <laughs> well, I can tell them a mile away. Oh, I don't know, Inspector. Would you say you were a policeman? What? Well, you haven't got very big feet, have you? Don't they say you can always tell a policeman a mile off by the size of his feet? Oh, that's bloody silly. Yes, isn't it? Well, I'm afraid there's nothing we can do about Leroy's feet. But regarding the girl, was there anything else about her that struck you? Yes, I thought she was a rather nice person. Well, thank you, Doctor. Not at all. It'll be most helpful. Goodbye. 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 You must have been pretty sure about young Harris. At any rate, she thought he'd take the doctor's news happily enough. Perhaps she summed the boy up wrongly. Any of the girls' addresses come through? Yes, sir. A house in Bloomsbury, before that a place in Earl's Court, and another lead, Chelsea Women's Hospital. We'll try Earl's Court first. Yes, sir. Yes, I remember Sapphire Robbins. What sort of a girl was she? Nice enough girl, considering she was coloured. Oh, you knew then? I guessed. You can always tell. Too eager to please, laugh too much, noisy with a gramophone. But I never mind, so long as they don't look it. Still, I had to get rid of her in the end. Why? Couldn't risk upsetting the other tenants. Some big coloured bloke started calling for her. Black as your hat he was. Well, I run a White House. You never can tell where the others are going to kick. What was this fella's name? I don't know. Did she get any phone calls? One or two from the International Club and her brother. Were you surprised when Sapphire got herself killed? All depends upon how much hate she stirred up. Hate? I dare say she was passing for white. So? Would you be pleased with the brass sovereign, Superintendent? Is that all? Yes, thank you very much. These landladies know it all, don't they? I wouldn't say that. After all, they've got a living to earn, I suppose. Chelsea Women's Hospital, isn't it? Yeah. Miss Mary Dawson. Yes. Oh, my name is Hazard. Uh, this is Inspector Leroy. You want to talk to me about Sapphire? Yes. I saw it in the paper. It upset me very much. Did you like Sapphire? Yes, I did. Tell me, was she fond of dancing? Mad about it. And who were her dancing partners? Ray Lander, Paul Slade. Uh -huh. How can we get in touch with these people? Ray Lander went home to Nigeria six months ago, but I can give you Paul Slade's telephone number. Uh, what is that? Chancery, 2496. Thank you. Paul Slade was a law student then. Now he's a barrister. Well, thank you, Mr. Orson. You'll, you'll be most helpful. Well, tell me, why do you stop seeing Sapphire? She stopped seeing me. I'm rather distinctive, you know. Hello, Ted. He's down there. He's been back and forth along that footpath all afternoon. What's he looking for? Search me, but whatever it is, he hasn't found it. See you. None of the neighbours saw Sapphire leave Harris's house on Saturday, sir. Yes? Mr. Paul Slade, sir. Oh, bring him in. The dancing lawyer. I beg your pardon, sir? What? Oh, it doesn't matter. This way, sir. It's very good of you to come all this way, Mr. Slade. Not at all. Thank you, Sergeant. I'd rather call on you than have you call on me. My father's in London for a conference at Lambeth Palace. I don't think there's a bishop living who'd appreciate his son being mixed up in a murder inquiry. However indirectly. Yeah, won't you sit down? Here, let me take that. I understand you knew Sapphire Robbins. Very well. May I? Please do. Oh, thank you. Where did you first meet her? At the International Club. One of those get-together, let's-be-brothers places. How long since you last saw her? Seven, eight months. Has she any other friends besides yourself? A chap called Ray Lander. 
He's gone home, I believe. Anyone else? Not that I know of. You sent for me to ask where I was on Saturday. I was meeting my father off a boat at Southampton. We stayed the night, and I drove him back to town on Sunday morning. Thank you. Did you ever have a photograph taken with Sapphire? Yes. In a group. Did you ever have one taken alone, dancing at a nightclub? Never alone, Superintendent. Do you ever take her shopping in Shaftesbury Avenue? Babette's, for instance. <laughs> Good Lord, no. Why? Well, if you didn't, it doesn't matter. What sort of a girl was Sapphire? Oh, neither one thing or other when I knew her. I imagine she changed after she got this yen to marry light, if you know what I mean. I do. That ruled you out anyway. The question of marriage between Sapphire and myself could never have arisen. How's that? My father would never have permitted it. Well, why not? Sapphire came from a good home. Her brother's a doctor. She was part white. Is that all? Well, for the moment, yes. If we need you, we'll send for you. Any help I can give? Thank you. Did he ask about Johnny? No. Good. If my old man knew I'd been around places like Tulips, he'd cut off my allowance and yank me back home. Is this policeman likely to get onto it? Shouldn't think so. Didn't strike me as being overburdened with brains. Sanctimonious. Always so careful to have his hand out first. I know. We're all the children of God. Get it. I see you've been talking to Slade. I suppose he's got a cast iron alibi. Yes. Yeah. But there's something he didn't want me to know. What's that? I don't know. He said he met Sapphire at the International Club. Get on to him. Find out uh, what time all the kids are likely to be there together. Okay. Yes? What is it, Sergeant? Oh, it's about young Harris, sir. What about him? He's up on the heath. He's been there all the afternoon. Looking for something. the drain, sir. It was quite deliberate, so I thought I'd best find out what it was. Well, it's a piece of wood. Well, it's been painted at some time. Look, you can see the red and blue marks. Yeah. Been jointed at both ends. Must have come off something. Off what, I wonder? Take this to the lab and see what they make of it. Very good, sir. Now, why on earth should that boy be so anxious to find that and then get rid of it? You'll be going away. Rome. It's a new world. 
new people, new places. You'll forget. I shan't. I can't. Davy, you did speak the truth about Saturday. You didn't meet Sapphire, did you? Davy, what happened on Saturday night? Mum, never ask what happened on Saturday. Never. Davy. You didn't meet Sava on Saturday, did you? Answer me, Davy. Did you? Granny! They're the twins. Answer me, Davy. Granny! All right, kids, Granny's here. Granny! 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 What's the matter? I thought you'd gone to tea with Molly Turnbull. Her mother didn't want us. Why? She said we were a funny family, and she didn't want us. What's happened? What is it, Mother? Go and take your hats and coats off, Mum. What is it? Mrs. Turnbull wouldn't have the twins for tea. I think they ought to go and stay with Katie in Richmond. Oh, I don't know what Sid would say. Stop pretending about Sid. He doesn't care whether they're here or in Timbuktu. He's a bad husband and a bad father. Right, Mum, I'll get Dad to drive them down tomorrow. Bring Katie now. All right. Mildred! What time did you leave Sapphire on Saturday? Half one, Mum. Then I went back to the shop. Left her here with Dad. Then only Dad was at home. That's right. Davy wasn't. No, he didn't get in till 11. Did you see him? No, I was in bed, but Dad was up. And we've only got Dad's word that he came in when he said he did. What are you thinking? Nothing. I'll ring Katie. You see to the children's tea. Oh dear, we'll never live it down. Who says? Molly Turnbull's mother. What won't we live down? I don't know, but it's something to do with Auntie Sapphire. She's dead. Time to settle down now, children. Mummy, why are we going to stay with Auntie Katie? Ask no questions and you'll be told no lies. It's because of Auntie Sapphire, isn't it? No. Don't call her Auntie. She's nothing to us and she never was. Night, no, my darling. Good night, Mummy. Good night, my love. Good night, Mummy. Straight up to sleep, no talking. Yes, Mummy. Good night. I've told you a dozen times if I've told you once, so why go on arguing about it? David came in at 11 o'clock. That's what I told the police, and it's the truth. What you told the police, Ted, but is it the truth? Stop accusing David, please, Mum. Millie, if we're to help him, we've got to know the truth. Lies are never any good. Who says David's telling lies? I don't want any supper, Mum. I'm going out. Where are you going, son? I'm going for a walk, Mum. Don't be too late, will you? who you're looking for here, Superintendent. We haven't seen Sapphire for six, seven months. We're really trying to fill in her background, Mr. Young. As you wish. This way. Thank you. 
Officers. They want to ask you a few questions about Sapphire Robbins. Was anyone here a particular friend of Sapphire's? We all were, weren't we? Once. What do you mean, once? I mean, she stopped coming here. Oh, why? They drift away, Superintendent. Grow out of us. Sapphire didn't drift away. She used to come here regularly. Then suddenly, she never came again. Why was that? Sapphire found she could pass for white. I was there the day it happened. Tell me. We had just finished coffee. I went to pay the bill. A white lady came in, took one look at my black mug and said, Oh, I see they've let the jungle in. She said this to Sapphire, you see, like they were the same. Sapphire left before I got my change. When I went outside, she'd gone. Silly little peasant. Did you ever dance with Sapphire? No, not me. Slade, Ray Lander, they were her partners. <laughs> and wishy-washy there. Where did you dance with her? Here, sir. Did she mention anyone else? Outside the club, I mean. No. no. Well, if you do remember anything, speak to Mr. Young. He'll know how to get in touch with us. Well, I think you're right. I don't think I shall find anything here. Thank you so much. Everybody's been most kind of you. I'll see you out. Please don't bother. You'll miss the performance. Right. He's a good pianist. Yes. And he's lucky. He'll be accepted for what he is. What's that? A good pianist. <laughs> There's a young lady in the car, sir. Uh, I thought as much. Uh, drive on the block. Phil, get in the front. Very good, sir. Yes, I know a lot about Sapphire they don't know. Go on. The rhythm at the club. It wasn't hot enough for her. So Paul Slade used to take her to Tulips. A dive in Shepherd's Bush. Oh, dear. His father, the bishop, huh? <laughs> yes, I know, his reverence. He'd as soon see his precious son in hellfire as at Tulips. Paul got into a fight there over Sapphire. Well, who did he fight with? Oh, Johnny's someone. Big, ugly fellow, he said. Sapphire danced crazy with him. Real crazy. Paul dropped her after that. Poor Sapphire. Oh, she couldn't care less. She'd got Johnny then. Of course, he didn't last very long when his color went out of fashion. How did you know that? He rang up, left a message for her. Ring Johnny at two lips. Sapphire had gone white then, so we never saw her. I told him. He was mad. They'd ended for some dancing competition. Cash prize, he said. You didn't like Sapphire? No. I was Paul Slade's girlfriend until she cut me out. I hated that high yellow doll. You can drop me anywhere here. I'll walk back. What are you studying? Montessori. Child welfare. I shan't bother with it, though. Well, why not? I want to get married. Stay here. I like the English. Well, thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, by the way, did you give uh, this Johnny Sapphire's new address? Oh, no, I wouldn't do that. Perhaps you got it from someone else, though, huh? Mm -hmm. Try Tulips Club. Shepherd's Bush. I will. Good night. Good night. Ten shillings, sir. 
Keep the change. Now then, ever heard of Sapphire? Down the hatch, Carter. Is Johnny in tonight? Johnny, is he in tonight? Talking to me, sir? Yes. Lots of Johnny here tonight, sir. Johnny Fingers? Johnny Hotfeet? Johnny Rags? And Johnny Tiger over there? Sure, all the Johnnies in the world are here tonight, sir. We want the Johnny to dance with this chick. This chick was never here at all, sir. Can I help you, Superintendent? Mr. Juliet? That's what they call me. We are looking for the Johnny who used to dance with Sapphire. This Sapphire. You mean the chick that was cut up on Hampstead Heat Saturday night? Mm -hmm. She's new to me. I never saw her here. That's a lily skin. Your chick was a lily skin, wasn't she? It's in the evening papers. I think I would have remembered if she'd ever been in here. Oh, you can always tell. Because once they hear the beat of the bongo... Skin. They can't hide that swing. Your chick was never here, Superintendent. Somewhere else she danced with her Johnny. Let's get out of here. Blow, Johnny. Don't come back. You're wearing too much trouble. Johnny! Where were you on Saturday night, Johnny? You wasn't in the club. Was you with Sapphire? Was you, Johnny? You blow, Johnny, blow! Can't go without loot. I'll bring you loot. You and your kind that get us respectable folk a bad name. Okay. 
Out of the way, Nick. On your way then, sonny boy. And hurry! <laughs> After you. The tents. Please help. I don't. They break the place to pieces. Tear the shop down. It's my living boy. Please, mister. I tell you I don't. Dad, you've got to. He's in trouble. I tell you I don't. You've got to, Dad. Come in. This way. Saturday night, Johnny. On the streets. With Sapphire? No, boss, no. Which street, Johnny? Down the West End. Who was with you? No one. I was on my path. Johnny, all alone, eh? The truth, Johnny. Come on, let's have the truth. Where were you Saturday night? Where were you Saturday night? Answer! Were you on Saturday night? In a car, on my way back from Cambridge. Where were you on Saturday night? I told you. Davy. Ever since you were a little boy, I've known when you were lying to me. Where were you, Sonny? Mum, I told you never to ask about Saturday night. Please. Saturday night, Johnny. Where were you? Alt! Alt! Where? On the streets! Who with? On my path! Who with? On my path! When did you see Sapphire last? I don't know, Sapphire! You phoned the International Club and left a message for her. Now, where were you Saturday night? Alt! Alt! Someone's gonna look at you in the morning. Someone who saw you with Sapphire. Want to change your story, Johnny? No! No! Right, book him. Come on, on your feet. Why do you say you didn't know Sapphire? You had a fight over her, tulips. Didn't kill her. All right, knew Sapphire, but didn't kill her. You were crazy about her, weren't you? No, we just danced. No. She went white and dropped you, didn't she? Then you ran into her on Saturday night, followed her and knifed her. No, we used to dance. That's all, just dance. Where is your knife, Johnny? Your knife, Johnny. Where is it? Where is your knife? All right, take him away. Find the knife and we've got him. Yes? Johnny Fiddle? Out. Up the stairs, far as you can go, left. Congress, aren't they? No, I wouldn't say that. She wasn't any delicate flower, you know. Just the same as him underneath. Besides, he didn't look so black to her then. No. Let's take a look around.
Look at this. And this. Looks like young Harris is in the clear. Yeah, it looks that way. Let's see what the lab has to say about it. It's quite a long trip. What? From here to Hampstead Heath. It's the other side of London. How the devil did he get there? Oh, there'll be a simple answer to the transport. You'd really like it to be this colored boy, wouldn't you? Message over the car radio, sir. There's a gentleman at the station says he drove Mr. David Harris from Cambridge last Saturday. Hey. <laughs> There's your transport for you. These spades are a load of trouble. I reckon we should send them back where they came from. We wouldn't have half this bother if they weren't here. Well, I suppose you're right. Just the same as you wouldn't have old ladies being covered by hooligans if there weren't any old ladies. So what do you do? Get rid of the hooligans or the people they bash? Look, Phil, given the right atmosphere, you can organize riots against anyone. Jews, Catholics, Negroes, Irish, even policemen with big feet. the boy you gave a lift to just outside Cambridge on Saturday? Yes. What time did you put him down? I dropped him at the post office. Mm, around six o'clock. He said he was only ten minutes walk away from where he lived. Are you sure? <laughs> I wouldn't be here if I wasn't. Do you deny this? What's the use? Well, thank you, sir. I hope you haven't wasted too much of your time. Oh, it's quite all right. Sorry, old chap. Well, sit down, Mr. Harris. What time did you get home on Saturday? Eleven o'clock. You heard what the man said. I got back to town at six. I didn't get home till eleven. And what did you do in between? Walked about. Then I went to the pictures. Well, why didn't you see this before? I didn't want my father to know. He worries if I go to the pictures too often in term time, thinks it strains my eyes. Give me your glasses. Which cinema did you go to? The Ritz. What were you doing on Hampstead Heath yesterday? If I told you, you wouldn't believe me. Well, just try, will you? I wanted to see where it happened. I had had some idea I might stumble on something. Something I'd recognize and you wouldn't. And did you? No. How about this? Why were you so anxious to get rid of this? I didn't. I, I, I never saw it before. I'm told it's part of a child's doll, a wooden doll, a leg, possibly. Is that what you think it is? Well, I don't think it's anything. It's ju just a piece of wood I was doodling with. You admit picking it up, then? Yes. You just said you didn't. I, I, I'd forgotten. Stop lying, Harris. You were seen pushing this down a drain. Why? I don't know. I don't know. You, you won't say. Now, on your way home from the post office on Saturday night, was it then you met Sapphire? No, I never saw was her. It then she told you about the baby? Look, I tell you, I never saw her. How long had you known she was colored? I didn't care. I didn't care. Oh, you did care about your scholarship. You didn't carry a grant for a wife, did it? If you married Sapphire, the scholarship was off. I loved her. I, I tell you, I loved Sapphire. Where were you when she was killed? Yes? Oh, excuse me, sir. Mr. David Harris's father is here with the solicitor. Right. All right, Harris. You better go with him, Phil. Ralph Piggott. 
Piggott North and Piggott Finsbury Pavement. Mr. Harris asked me to come and look after his son. Can I see my client, please? It's all yours. Tough monkey, that father. Must have moved like the wind to get a lawyer around here. Yeah, there they go. Hmm. I wonder where he was on Saturday night. I'm getting into a taxi now. Going after the Ritz to find a witness, I'll bet. <laughs> that was a very human lie. Boy didn't want to upset his father. Couldn't own up later. He was in too deep. Where was he on Saturday night? Who? Old Harris. Oh, at the uh, uh, local social club. Did we check it? All right, don't look so horrified. We can't think of everything. Not even us. Constable Ferris is also a member of that social club. No, sir. Ted Harris didn't come into the club till late on Saturday night. About ten. That's definite. All right, Harris. Sure. Not until ten, eh? Well, he gave us the impression he'd been there all evening. No, he didn't. No. His daughter took it for granted, and we naturally followed. You know, go around and see her. Try and bounce into giving something away. We still haven't had the report on Johnny Fiddle's knife. No, we've got that to come. Drive out of that dairy, will you? Of course, Dad spent the evening at the club. He always does, Saturdays. My information is he didn't get there until 10. You're not trying to suggest that he had anything to do with it? Oh, I'm not saying he did. I merely want to know where he was. Then ask him, Superintendent. Did Sapphire often go to your house? Yes. And I suppose, really, you were all as much to blame as David. What do you mean? Well, you shouldn't have made her so welcome if you didn't want him involved with the coloured girl. We didn't know she was coloured. Not until... Not until when, Mrs. Farr? Not until Saturday, was it? The day she was killed. My father didn't do it, I swear, Superintendent. You can search the house from top to bottom. You'll not find a speck of blood or a trace of sapphire. Thank you, Mrs. Vaughan. Peckish, Lily. Slip across to Max and get me a ham sandwich, will you? Well, go on. No, old Harris can't be back yet or he'd answer that phone. No, wait a minute. She'll ring again. Who? Mildred. Oh, there's no one in. Mrs. Harris has gone down to Richmond, the miller's at the dairy. Oh, thank you. You might find Mr. Harris in the paint shed, but uh, you'll have to go around the yard at the back for that. Thanks. He's not here. I'd like to know what's underneath that dust sheet. Now, we haven't got enough evidence to get a search warrant for this place. No. It was expecting too much. Saturday night, packed house. How could she remember? You didn't make this up in the spur of the moment, did you? If the boy says he went to the pictures, he went to the pictures. You sound like the police. If I'm going to help you, I've got to think like a police. It's no use boggling. They've got a very good circumstantial case. They've got no case at all. The boy didn't do it, and if you can't clear him, I will. You hope you can, that's what I you know mean. I can, I know Shut I... up talking across me. He's never talked to me like that in his life. Perhaps there's a side to the boy you've never seen, Mr. Harris. I know my own son. He didn't kill Sapphire. I know he didn't. 
Tell Sergeant Newton I want him right away. Very good, sir. Right. Thank you. Report from the lab, Bob. The blood on Johnny Fiddle's shirt is the same group as the girls, and his knife could have inflicted the wounds. Right, let's have him up. Okay. Uh, you wanted me, sir? Oh, Newton. Get a warrant to search all the sheds at the back of Oakland Road. Say we're looking for stolen lead. I want to see inside Harris's paint shop. Right, sir. Is this yours, Johnny? No, boss. No. Then what was it doing in your mattress on your bed? Someone put it there. He, he put it there. What? All right. The blood found on this knife, on your shirt, matches Sapphire's blood. And uh, what about this? You and Sapphire, isn't it? Did you kill her, Johnny? Did you? No, boss, no. The blood matches. Not Sophia's blood. Then who's your big lug? Horace, big cigar. We fight Saturday night. Why the hell didn't you say this before? They say I killed him, boss. They say? Who saw this fight? Them. Them? Who's them? Alexander, Jen Ricky, Big Sam. Where do we find these people? Number 16, down the street from my place. It was self-defense, boss. Horace Big Cigar attacked me. I not mean to kill him. I'll bet. No, 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 I'll cover. I'll cover it. Come, baby. Come, baby. Hey, Yes. Yes. We've been enough. Yep. Step enough. Step enough. What's your name? Horace Big Seagull. What's yours, man? This man's law. Now, no ignorant, foolish talk, man. All right, yes. sir. Yes. Yes. According to our information, Horace, you're dead. Incorrect. Not ready for my coffin yet. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you Saturday night, Horace? Oh, right here, boss. Why are you in bed? Sick man, boss. Very sick. How come? How'd you get that? Oh, hit by a jumble car. What car? Knocked out. Had no opportunity to see the vehicle. <laughs> Johnny Fiddle, one big lie then, huh? What'd you say, boss? What'd you say Johnny Fiddle done? We're booking him for the killing on Hampstead Heath Saturday night. That's what Johnny Fiddle done. Sapphire, that chick that got caught up? The same. <laughs> that sure is one big pity. Johnny Fiddle will take you trouble, eh? <laughs> you hear that, man? <laughs> Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> Fiddle Unless you can give him an out. He says he was with you. You sure wasting your time. I got no out for Johnny Fiddle. You go. Hang him. Where the jumble car knocked you down, Horace? You sure wise man, boss. Alexander? Yes, boss. Jin Ricky? Yes, boss. Big Sam? Yes, boss. Why did you tell Johnny Fiddle he'd killed Horace Big Cigar? Johnny Fiddle wears too much of a high hat. We seek a way to knock it off. Make that big bushman sweat, boss. Are they all here Saturday night? All here, boss. All right, names. You. Alexander.
We're in here. Did you find what you wanted? I think so. Well? I've just seen Sapphire's brother. I've asked him to call round here. Not her brother. We don't want him here. You'd better turn that yourself. He'll be here in a minute. I said we don't want him here. I want him. I wonder if Sapphire would have been happy here. What do you think, Mr. Harris? Why shouldn't she be? I don't know. I'm asking you. to the door. How do you do? I'm Mrs. Harris. Will you sit down? Thank you. Robbins, I'll ask you to come here because I think you may be able to help us. If I can. Did Sapphire want to marry this boy? Yes, sir. I think she did. Well, David's father here has been insisting all along that he's willing to let them marry. That's right. Assuming he's telling the truth, that would have left the decision with David. Did your sister give you the impression that he would have married her? I don't know that I can answer that. I mean, we, we never really discussed I've told you over and over again, yes. But supposing your father were lying and didn't want you to marry her? I didn't care. But you cared about your scholarship, didn't you? You cared about your career. Marriage would have stopped all that. It wasn't me that was mad about the career. So you say. I wouldn't know. You may have thought that a bit of fun was one thing, but that marriage was too high a price to pay for it. This boy couldn't do anything like... Don't need you to defend our David. Mildred. How about you, Mr. Harris? You had your reasons too, didn't you? I didn't wish her any harm. Of course not. She was going to marry David. That's what you said, wasn't it? That's right. I gave her my word he would. But she didn't marry him, did she? She would have done. Would have done? If you hadn't stopped her, is that what you mean? That's not true. I didn't wish her any harm. None of us did. We liked her. We liked her. If David wanted her, that was the end. That was good enough. Shut up! Why don't you tell her the truth? You hated her. All you ever wanted was for me to be an architect. My boy, an architect. You were going to send me away, but you, you hated her so much that you finally... Get him out! Don't want his hands on my kids' toys. Don't want him near my kids. Don't want his dirty hands on my children. Tearing up my family, they're mine. Really hate color 
with people, don't you? You really hate them. And with Sapphire, you couldn't control yourself. And that's why you killed her. It wasn't like that. It wouldn't have happened if she hadn't come to the dairy. I'd locked her up, drawn the blinds. She banged on the door and called to me. I had to let her in. You said she was fed up, waiting for David, wanted my company. She sat on the counter all the time I was tidying up, sweeping, doing Lilith's work, swinging her legs and laughing. She couldn't see what she'd done. She didn't care. Ruining David's life. Ruining Dad's dream. When I said she'd better watch out, David might prefer to give her ten bob a week for the yellow brat and keep his scholarship. She laughed in my face and said David didn't care what colour the baby was or what colour she was. He wanted her and I'd forgotten what that was like. I'd forgotten what it was like to be wanted. She was taunting me with Sid never coming home. Then she jumped down from the counter, put her hand on my shoulder and said, give the twins Auntie Sapphire's love and tell them I'll have a new little cousin soon. New little cousin. There was a knife on the counter. And then there was blood. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dad. I know, son. You thought I killed her. I don't blame you. We all had hate in our hearts. I loved Sapphire. Going back to Birmingham tonight? Yes. Can I give you a lift to the station? Thank you. I'd like to walk. Well? We haven't given you very much to take back, have we, Doctor? No. But then I see all kinds of sickness in my practice, Superintendent. I've never yet seen the kind you can cure in a day. don't get solved without somebody getting hurt. You know that. We didn't solve anything, Phil. We just picked up the pieces. 